Hi and welcome to another Vengeance Producer Suite Avenger product video. This time I would like to show you the amp section, the filter section and the shaper section. Well, let's start with uh, the amp section. <coughs> As you can see, you can have four of them and you see which OSC is routed into the amp section by the color code here. You see now both OSCs are in this amp and now the second OSC goes through this amp. Well, what is an amp? Um, an amp basically holds the amp envelope, things like the volume, the panning, the key track and some stereo things like spread, uh, the velocity of the volume and so on. This is an amp. Uh, let's play with the init default sawtooth and as you can see you can adjust the envelope here, attack decay, sustain and release and the inner ring is defines the curve of the bending a double click on the right button resets it you also have the bending in uh, the attack phase and of course in the release phase So, well, this is uh, the basic envelope for the amp, for the volume, but uh, you can also select an external source. For example, if you want to use uh, the mod envelope as the uh, volume envelope or another one, then they appear here for selection. Let's choose mod envelope one. Now this is grayed out and the mod envelope 1 uh, now controls the volume. Advantage of this envelope is um, that you can define as many points as you like and furthermore it's tempo synced so this is, as you can see here, one eight note. Yeah, and if I select this to none, then this envelope again will control the volume. Well, what do we have else? Uh, we have the volume, of course of this amp module. This is the velocity. This defines how it reacts to the key pressure. And this is actually the curve of the velocity. And then we have the spike, which I personally is one of my favorites because this one is really, really, really strong. As you can hear, it really, really boosts the attack of the sound. The curve here defines um, the duration of the attack. Okay, if you move it all the way to the left, it's the shortest possible attack. And it also can uh, react to velocity. If this is all the way up, then if you press the key stronger, the spike is applied. If you press it softer, there is no spike. Okay, the panning, I don't think I have to explain this. This is just the balance between left and right. Pan key track defines if lower keys are more on the left and higher are more 
on the left, like um, the higher notes are more on the right on the real piano, for example, and the left notes are more on the left. The spread um, defines if you press a key, there is an alternating panning position. Now, every note I press, it's alternating between left and right. And on the other direction, it's a random number. So, now every note is panned randomly. So, okay, that's the amp. Um, let's move on to the filter. Again, you can have up to four filter modules here and select on the routing which filter this oscillator should use. You can also have multiple filters in a row. So now the signal of oscillator 1 goes through filter 1 and then through filter 2. Um, let's choose just one filter. Um, yeah, at the moment the analog low pass 12 dB is selected. Let's add a bit of resonance. Um, this section is equally to the section which I already described here. This is the filter envelope. The only difference is you need to have the envelope amount defined. This defines how much this envelope will affect the filter cutoff. If you turn it all the way up. Let's choose an arpeggiator. Let's choose the 24 dB, which is a bit steeper. You have more filter types, for example, the Nexus filter. Which is really nice. And it looks sounding. So let's reset this. Uh, as you also can see, you have different options here. For example, this, let's switch back to the analog. This defines how the resonance is added. Um, the re reso additive means that the resonance is added without affecting the volume of the signal. The resonance balanced will lower the volume so no cl uh, clipping can occur and it has an even balance. I like to use the additive because we have enough headroom in the plugin to avoid clippings. So this usually works. Then you have a uh, filter drive. Which also can be in an oversampled mode to avoid Elias artifacts. Okay. TB three or three like. Um, then we have the comp filter, which is really nice. It adds um, some notches to the signal. And it also interacts with the envelope amount. Yeah. 
This can be used with nearly any filter type. If you choose here, for example, uh, filter XL filter. <laughs> Yeah, and as you can see, this can everything can be uh, used on your pressure, and you keep pressure on your velocity level. So let's show some more filter types. Uh, of course, we have high pass filters. Let's reset the envelope. A bit of resonance. What else do we have? We have bond passes, uh, like this here. But the comp filter can still be used, or the drive. Uh, we have band stop filters, uh, for example. This has now another um, option here called band which defines the bandwidth. Nice phasing sound. Um, we also have some special filters like analog peak, which sweeps, uh, sweeps through the signal like a uh, peaking equalizer. This is also switches the phase. Then we have the real comp filter here. The polarity can be reversed. Then we have some Special filters like the rate reducing filter or here with FM. Ring modulation and uh, which I personally like very much are the uh, talking band pass filters. Talk band stop. Uh, we also have a special talk box filter which is taken from our Vengeance uh, Produce um, Effects Bundle. <laughs> And last but not least, let me quickly show the key track, which I forgot. Um, the key track is now set to zero. This means the cutoff is the same on every key range. But if you turn up the key range, then the higher I go, the more the cutoff will open. And the good thing here is, for example, if I take a band pass, the resonance will be always on the correct note. So you can make whistling noise sounds, which are always on the right key. Okay, let's move on to the shaper module. But before, let me reset the filter. Ah, before I forgot, we also have a master filter module. This master filter is special because it's on the very end of your signal. It affects all the, the, the global output of Avenger. And this is great for making a filter sweep on the complete sound output. 
Uh, I personally like to use, for example, a high pass filter, which is waiting in this position. And it's absolutely not affecting the signal at all. If you turn it on or off, you will not lose any bus or any other content. So you can keep it enabled and when necessary perform a high pass sweep on your complete output. So now let's move to the shaper. Again you can have four shaper modules here which can be added here and they can actually be moved in position. So the shaper is a is a distortion effect and you can, let me remove it. By the way, if you right click anywhere here, you can see where the module is located. Um, so let me remove the other shaper modules. Let's keep just one. The shaper is a distortion on oscillator level. This, this means um, you actually can play chords. And every note of the chord is distorted on its own. This means you do not distort the mix, the complete chord. You distort every note on its own so this distortion will stay clean. And the distortion also uses two equalizer bands before the distortion. So you can shape your sound. And here's band two. You also can split. This now means this uh, equalizer is on the left and this is on the right. You have various types you can choose from. This is uh, at the moment is the soft distortion. Then we have a bit more heavy. This one is an oversampled version, which uh, is absolutely clean in the higher areas. Great for lead guitars or something like that. Um, then we have fold. quite harsh and flip of course this can be used on every waveform here we, we just are using the saw now but this can be any wave or any sample whatever you like and uh, let's switch back to the saw and uh, there's have devil or polynom. Yeah, but I like soft the most. What you also can do anytime is, of course, putting a modulation, for example, on the frequency. Now the LFO modulates the frequency. Okay, so uh, I think that's enough for now. You see how much you can do with the shaper or the filters. I uh, hope to see you in the next video where we will take a look maybe on the mod matrix and the LFOs or maybe the arpeggiator. Don't know yet. Let me let let us see what what comes next. So see you in the next video. Bye.